Hi guys, if you are planning on studying in the UK anytime soon, you would know that giving an interview to the visa officials would be a part of this entire process. Today's video is to help you understand what those questions are going to be so that you can prepare in advance and be completely stress-free on the day of your interview. I'm Ashika and I normally talk about moving to the UK. And with that, let's dive in. The student visa interview is often called the credibility interview because the officials actually want to interview you and ensure that you are getting a visa to move to the UK for actually credible reasons that you actually want to study in the UK and not for all the wrong reasons. Now the interview could happen either at one of the visa centers or it could happen online either via Skype or Zoom. So it's really important for you to understand how the interview is going to take place in advance and prepare accordingly. If it is a face-to-face -face interview, you absolutely need to get there in advance and make sure you have everything in place. If it's an online interview, you need to make sure that you download whatever software is going to be on either Zoom or Skype in advance and have it installed on your system ready to go. Please also remember to dress appropriately. Remember that you are going for an interview at the end of the day and these officials are not your friends. Often if you dress extremely casually, it might be taken as an indication that you aren't very serious about this. So do remember to wear the right attire. The other thing is you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared to show the officials whatever documentation they ask for, which is probably proof of everything that you're saying during that conversation. And you also need to be prepared for the kind of questions that they are going to ask you and be prepared with appropriate answers. If you aren't prepared and you start to fumble during your interview, it could be seen that either you haven't prepared or that you're lying, both of which might lead to a rejection of your visa and that's something you absolutely do not want. Remember to practice in advance, set up mock tests with your friends or with your family members and do multiple rounds of preparation in anticipation of this interview. I don't recommend practicing in front of a mirror to be really honest, but at least because at least for me, I get extremely distracted. But if it works for you, go ahead. Another tip is to be extremely honest and as honest as you possibly can, because to be honest, these officials interview hundreds if not thousands of students and they can smell the BS from a mile away. Do yourself a favor and do not lie. And finally, be calm. Listen to the question completely before you start answering. Take a deep calm breath and then answer. You'll find it a lot easier. With that, let's get into the questions. Now there are different buckets that most of the questions would fit into. And the first bucket of questions that you should anticipate is your immigration and your educational history. Now, as a part of this, you will be asked if you've ever been to the UK, if you have had your UK visa rejected in the past. Now, if you've had any other visa rejected in the past, don't bring it up unless you are specifically asked about that country. You could be asked, what if you got a UK degree here and now, would you come back to the UK for further higher studies? You could also be asked why you chose the UK for your higher studies. Why didn't you consider your home country or why didn't you consider any other country? You could be asked how many universities you applied to, which those universities were, which universities accepted you, why you decided to go for this particular university out of the other universities that accepted you. At this point, it's really important for you to mention why you picked this particular university based on all the research you have done, the university rankings or any other factors that you used to make this decision. They might also ask you names of professors, whether you've received a scholarship. Another question they could ask you is where your university campus is located. Now, they don't expect you to nail down the absolute complete address but they do expect you to have a basic idea of where the university is, the town, the city, whatever it is. They could ask you what course you're going to do and why you selected this course. At this point, it makes sense to quote the research you did and why this course was great for you. The fact that it has more career prospects at the end of it, the fact that your educational background until now led up to this particular course, the fact that you have an interest in it, whatever it is, but you need to be able to substantiate this. They could also ask you questions on whether this is relevant to your previous studies. Another question you should anticipate is what the course structure is and what its content is. Now, they don't expect you to have all of the details nailed down here, but you need to have an overall idea at this point. Another question they could ask you is why you didn't do this course back home. What you could say is that the course offered back home didn't have the same comprehensive structure as the course does in the UK and hence you wanted to opt for this. They could also ask you how long your studies will take and when your course is due to commence. I need a quick break so hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and remember to click on the bell icon for notifications. One of the next buckets is your personal and financial circumstances. Now under this section one of the most common questions you will be asked is who's sponsoring you. If it is your parents you need to see your parents or 
maybe it could be your savings, maybe you've taken a bank loan, but whatever it is, you need to be extremely clear in your communication here. They could ask you what your tuition fee is and how much you have already paid as your tuition fees. You should have all of these numbers ready. Another very common question is for them to ask you how much money you would require to cover, cover your tuition fees and your living expenses in the UK. One more question is what the source of income is for your particular sponsor, especially if your sponsor is your parents, they'll want to know from where they're getting their money if they might also ask you for proof that your sponsor can support your studies, whether your sponsor has other dependents on them and whether they can sponsor the entire course of your stay in the UK so that then they may ask you for bank statements or any income proof to proof, prove all of this. Some of the other questions you should anticipate are whether you are married and if you are married, if your spouse is planning to accompany you to the UK, if your spouse is planning to stay back home, what the qualifications of your spouse are, what they've studied, what they currently do, and whether they've been in the UK in the past, whether they've worked or studied in the UK in the past. They could also ask you if you have siblings and especially if your siblings or any family members are in the UK, either studying or working now or in the past, they could ask you about your family income. Next up, they might ask you why you specifically want to study in the UK. This could include questions like your career and your personal goals. It would really help if you had a robust plan over here and not something that you've just whipped up suddenly at the top of your head and you then convinced the interviewer that moving to the UK, studying in the UK was imperative for these plans to actually come to realization. Another question you probably will be asked is whether you plan on staying in the UK after you have completed your course or whether you will be returning back to your home country. The ideal answer to say over here is that you will be returning to your home country. Now, when they ask you whether you plan on returning back to your home country, they could also ask you for proof that you will be returning. So if you are planning on returning, what you could say is, that you have family members back home and you would like to be with them or the fact that you plan on taking the skills that you have learned at the university at the, in the UK and using them back home to start your own initiative or grow in your career. They could also ask you what plans you had once you come back home. The next thing they will quiz you on is your communication skills in English. Now it's important for you to understand that all of the courses in the UK will obviously be in English and whenever you communicate with anyone here, it's going to be in English. So obviously your communication skills in English are really, really important. Now the reason they specifically ask you this is because if you've seen the news a little while ago, there apparently were a lot of students that were faking their IELTS exams and providing fake certificates of passing. and Please understand that if you do this, you are going to be caught at some point or the other and your visa will be rejected or cancelled. So please don't do that. Some of the questions you should anticipate here are which test did you take and what your score was. At this point, it's really important for you to quote which test you took and how much you actually scored in this test and obviously have proof along with that. And with this, you should be ready to ace your interview. Now, do remember to be extremely calm and run over your personal statement multiple times before you actually sit for this interview. Now, if you'd like to know what your life is going to be like once you move to the UK as a student, and what you should expect, I definitely recommend you watch this.